Hello, and welcome back to App Development. So today we're going to continue on with databases, but we're going to shift away from databases that are stored on the phone, and we're going to move to databases that are stored out on the web. So the cool thing that this is going to allow us to do is we're going to make a single app that multiple people will be able to sort of communicate and interact with and share their information. Um, so to kind of contrast it, like with the tiny DB, if you were making a game, you could have like a top 10 scores that you've achieved. Um, but with the tiny web DB, since all users of the app are going to be sharing the same web database, you could have a top 10 list of everyone that's played the game ever. All right. So that's kind of the difference. You know, tiny DB lets us focus on just your phone and the memory on your phone. Um, tiny web DB is going to let us create sort of more shared experiences and data sets. So what we're going to make here today is a little storytelling app. All right. And the idea of it is like that little game where like one person will say a sentence of the story and then it passes to the next person and they have to say a sentence and then it passes to the next person and they have to say a sentence. And it usually devolves into like some sort of crazy, ridiculous story. Um, that's pretty much what we're going to make here. All right. Um, the story is going to be saved on our web database. So in that sense, anyone that goes and interacts with it will be able to add to it and we'll all be looking at kind of the same story. Um, in fact, last year when we did this, um, somebody in the class spoiled Avengers for me, um, Endgame. I didn't know like the big finale and somebody added it to the story and I don't, still don't know who it was, but um, that was really great of them. Um, so. I don't think there's really any movies out right now that you could spoil for me because there's not really any new movies out, but uh, long story short, don't be a jerk and spoil things. All right. So first things first, um, I am going to include the empty app in Classroom, um, but if for whatever reason you have a hard time getting that file or need to make it yourself, it's super, super simple. Um, there are going to be two screens. So screen one just has a single label that says choose an existing story. Then it has a list picker. Um, and I changed the text on the list picker to story list. All right. Then it has another label that just says add a new story. Then it has an empty text box. All right. Then it has a button that I put the word add on. Um, and then it's going to need tiny web DB. All right, which is down here in the storage menu. All right, there's TinyWebDB. Um, and this service URL, I will post in the Google Classroom, but you're going to have to change the default URL in there to a custom one that I give you. Um, and that'll be the custom database that we use as a class for all of our projects. So again, you're going to need that, and I'll put that in um, Google Classroom for you. And then you are going to want a notifier because we are going to put little messages up. And again, the notifier is just in the user interface menu. All right, so that's screen one, really, really simple. Um, screen two, which I called the story screen. You could keep calling it screen two if you want, but if you want to be able to follow along exactly, you just want to call it story screen. Um, and all that has is one text label, and I didn't even bother to change the text because we're going to do that in the program. Um, a second text label. And again, I didn't bother to change the text because we're going to do it in the text in the program. Um, both of those, I set the width to fill parent um, and I left the height at automatic. And then an empty text box. Again, not much to do there. Um, a single button that says add to story, a single button that says home. Again, tiny web DB and that same address will go there. So it is important that you change that. Otherwise, you won't be sharing the same database. And then a clock that's set to 3,000. All right. And remember, that's in milliseconds. So that actually means the clock is going to expire every three seconds. So when I put 3,000 in there, that really means three seconds. Okay. So if you want to make it yourself, 
Um, that's all there is to it. Otherwise, you can just import the one that I attach to Classroom. All right. So back here on screen one, I'm going to move over to the Blocks menu. All right. And the first thing that I'm going to do is just make a bunch of variables. All right. So I'm going to get one variable right here. Let me zoom in so it's a little easier to see it. All right. So I've got one variable right there. And I'm just going to put a text block in there. And inside the text block, I'm going to type once upon a time and then put a space after that. All right. And that's just going to be the default beginning of any of our stories. All right. So anytime we create a new story, it's always going to start with that line once upon a time. All right. Then we're going to want another variable. Right. And I'm going to call, oh, so this one I actually want to change the name to intro. So we'll call that one intro. This one we're going to call it story list. And we're going to use this to keep track of all the different stories that have been created because we're actually going to make it possible so that people can create multiple stories. All right. So this one is just going to start off as an empty list. All right. So we haven't made any stories yet, so it's an empty list. Um, and then we're going to have another variable and the purpose of this isn't going to be clear right away. So let's just, whoops, not set. Let's get one more variable here. And we're going to call this one add story. And we're going to set it to false. And again, that one will become clear in a little bit, but for right now, just we're going to have a variable called add story and set it to false. All right. So the first thing that's going to happen is when the app loads, we're going to go into the database and see if stories are already there, if things have already been created. So anytime an app loads, if we want to run some code, we can go to the screen one menu and we want the when screen initialized, right? Because that will keep that will run code that that happens just once, but when the app loads up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go down to Tiny Web DB, and you're going to see that the blocks in here are different than Tiny DB. All right, we have this purple get value, which is how we look things up. We have a purple store value, which is how we send things to the database, and then we have a couple of different um, events here. One is got value, one is value stored, and one is web service error. So what's a little different here is that when you go out across the web, there's a delay, all right? So if I search for something in a web database, I have to send out the request, the web database has to look for it, and then it has to send back a response. It's not instantaneous like it was with TinyDB. With TinyDB, the database is right there on the phone, so it can instantly look it up. Um, with the web database, it's not right on the phone. It's out there on the internet, so there's this delay. And that's what these blocks are for. So if I put a request out to the database to get something, this event right here, got value, will trigger when the database responds. Right? If I store something in a database, this event will trigger after that store has been successfully completed. It's like the database will send back, I like, hey, okay, I stored it. Um, and this lets you know that it succeeded. And then this last one here, you can use, uh, not sorry, not get value. Um, this last one you can use here um, if there's some sort of error that happens when you're interacting um, with the database. and, and um, maybe the database is down, maybe your request got lost, but this is sort of like an error handler. All right. So a little different than the tiny DB. Also notice that there's no get all tags. All right. So with tiny DB, we had that one block that would just like get all of the tags in the database. Um, the same thing does not exist in the web DB because again, if you're sharing it among all users, if you had a really popular app, there could be millions and millions of tags. 
So we're not gonna we're not gonna get all of those back um, the same way we did. And then the other stuff here, like service URL, that would just be if you needed to change the address, but we're not really ever gonna need to do that in our program. So again, similar but but actually you know different um, than the tiny DB. So, anyways, the first thing we do when this when the screen loads, we're going to search in our web database for our table of contents. All right. Now, the table of contents is something we're actually going to set up and create. All right. But again, because we have no way of getting all of the tags at once, we kind of have to create our own list of the stories. So we're going to do that. And the name that we're going to give that tag is the ICC story list. So what we're basically saying is, hey, go into the database and find our table of contents that lists all the stories. And you're going to be able to find that underneath the heading ICC story list. And again, there's nothing special about that. That's just um, the name that I'm picking there. Okay. So we're sending a request to the database, all right? It's being submitted to the database. The database is going to send back information. I'm just going to get rid of this web service error one for right now. All right. And when it sends back the information, this event right here is going to trigger. All right. So this is what's going to trigger as soon as the database sends us back some information. All right. And we can get the tag and we can get the value. All right. So this is where we're going to start working right now. All right. And the first thing we're going to put in here is an if else statement. All right. So we're going to go if, and then we're going to click on the gear and we're going to get an else. It doesn't need to be an else if, just a regular else. Right. And what we're going to do is we're going to check to see what we got back, all right? Because there's two possibilities here. We're either going to get back a list of stories or this is the very first time anyone's using our app and that list of stories doesn't actually exist yet, all right? So the way we're going to test this is we're going to go to this list menu and we're going to say, is a list. All right, so there's a blue block down here that says is a list. And we're going to say, hey, this value that we got back from the database, all right, so the value that we got back from the database, is it a list? All right, because if it's not a list, that means nobody's actually created a table of contents yet. All right, if it is a list, then somebody's already created the table of contents and we can just read from that or add to it or do whatever we want to it. So we're going to assume right now that the table of contents hasn't been created. So what we're going to do is we're going to work down here in the else section. We're going to leave the if part blank for right now. So if no one's created it, what we're going to do is we're basically going to create it. All right, we're going to create our table of contents. So we're going to start by going back here and we're going to add an item to our list. All right. And the list that we're going to add to is the story list variable that we already created. And because this, this is the very first time it's being used, we're just going to go with the default story name, my first story. Right. Later on, people will be able to pick their own story names, but since this is, again, kind of like creating the table of contents for the very first time, we're just going to put in my first story. Then we're going to go to our tiny web DB and we're going to say store that value. Right. And what we're going to do is we're going to store inside of ICC story list, because again, that was that's where our table of contents is. All right, so there's our ICC story list. 
And then what we're going to store is that list that we just added an item to. All right, so again, I see story list is just going to be a big long list of all the stories that have been created. And we're just storing that in there right now. And there's only that, that single story being stored inside of it. Now, this is the table of contents, but it's not the story itself. All right, so we're going to have to make a second submission. All right, this submission is to update the table of contents. And then we're going to make a second submission that's actually the story itself. All right, so it's going to be a second submission that's actually the story itself, which is different than the table of contents. So the tag is not going to be ICC story list. That's the tag for our table of contents. We're going to make a new tag. And because the, this database is going to be used for a lot of things, we're always just going to put a prefix in front of things. So what I mean by that is anything that goes with this lab, we're always going to start with ICC. That way, if somebody uses the same name for something in a different lab, it won't screw this one up because it won't say ICC at the start. So anytime we create anything in this lab, the tag is always going to start with ICC. So here's ICC story list. And then this tag is going to be ICC. And then we're going to use the name of the story. So it's going to be ICC, my first story. This is ICC story list. Again, it's just we're always going to put ICC in front of everything in this lab to keep it straight from future labs that we do. And then the value to store um, is just going to be the little intro variable. All right. So that's going to be the words once upon a time. So that will actually store um, the values in, in our database there. All right. So we're actually making two submissions to the database. One is to our table of contents. And one is to create an actual entry for the story. All right. All right. So once both of these happen, all right, we should expect this event to trigger over here. All right. This is going to trigger our event that's saying, hey, your value has been stored. All right. And the only thing that we're going to do when our value has been stored is we're going to update our list picker. All right. So we're going to update the list picker and just say, hey, once the value has been stored, set the elements. So elements is another word for options. So like set the options of your list picker. To, oops, to the variable story list, All right? So that's just going to make it so that um, our list picker is always up to date with the most recent story options, All right? So when it's been stored, we're just going to update the list picker with the elements to story list, which at the very beginning is just going to have one option, my first story. All right. So again, this is just kind of like priming the pump. It's just saying if for some reason there's no table of contents in the database, you have to be the one that creates the table of contents. All right. So this is being created. All right. After it's been created, this code's really never going to run again. It's just there for the very first time that we need to create the database. After that, there's always going to be stuff that's already in there. Okay. So let's take a look at our screen here. So we've got this list picker, then we've got this text box, and we've got this add button. All right. So next thing we're going to talk about is like actually adding a new story. All right, so the way that that's going to work is when they click on the add button. All right, so we're going to go over here and we say when they click on the add button. 
the first thing we're actually going to do, and this might be a little counterintuitive, but we're going to look up our table of contents. All right. And the reason we're going to do this is that people could be interacting with this database at all times. So we're going to load the app. We're going to get a story list. But as we're coming up with the name for our story, it could be that somebody on the other side of the world has gone and added a story of their own. So before we add anything, we want to make sure we have the most up-to-date list of stories. So when we try to add something, the first thing we're actually going to do is go and look up the list so that we can know um, if anything has happened. All right. And then the other thing that we're going to do, and this is going to become clear in a while, in a second here, is we're going to set our add story variable um, to true. Because remember, it was false at the very beginning. So we're going to set it to true. All right. So again, this is our add button right here. And all we're doing is looking up the table of contents and then setting this add variable to true. All right. So last but not least, all right, when we look this up, this is going to send us back to this event, all right, because we've got this one event for every time the database responds. So we're looking up the story list. This time, we know the list isn't going to be empty because we created it down here. So we're actually going to end up in the top half of this if statement. All right. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just set our story list to the value from the web database. Again, that way we're always getting the most up-to-date version. All right. Then what we're going to do is we're going to update our list picker. Again, just so that everything is up-to-date. Anytime we go to the database and get information, there's no reason not to update everything. So we're going to set where is it? Uh, set list picker elements to our global story list. All right, so that'll update that. And then last but not least, actually not last but not least, but now what we're going to do is actually go through and add this new story to our database. So we're going to put another if statement in here. And we're going to say if add equals true. So we're going to get a logic here and say if our add story variable equals true. Because there's actually two ways we can end up in the top part of this if statement. All right, we can end up because there was already a table of contents and we just need to update the list picker, or we get it up here because somebody's adding a story. So this is the specific part for when somebody's adding a story. And the main thing is that when somebody adds a story, we have to make sure that that story doesn't already exist. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use in the control menu for each item in list, all right? And the list that we're using is the story list, right? Because the story list is the table of contents. It's all of the stories that have been created, all right? So we're going to go through and we're going to look at every single story that's been created and we're going to check to see if it matches the story that we just added. So to check to see if it matches, that's going to be another if statement. And we're going to say if 
the text box where they typed in their story name, all right, so that's the light green text box, if that equals, all right, if that's the same as the item, because the item, again, is all of our titles, all right, so if those are the same, then we know that, uh-oh, there's a duplicate here, and we have a problem. All right, so the way we're going to signify that is we're going to put use our notifier to put out a message. So I'm going to choose show message dialog, and I'm just going to put out in a quick message that's something like, you know, uh, that name is already in use. And then I can put in a title that just says error. And the button can just say, okay. And because we're from Columbia County, instead of okay, I'm going to write old kinder hook. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set our add story variable to false to signify that we're not actually going to add anything. All right. Like we failed, it didn't get added. So we're setting add story to false because in fact there was a duplicate. All right. And then right below this, we're going to put another if statement. All right. So we're still inside of this first if. All right, so again, down at the bottom, there's the else that we did at the start. And then inside of this if part, we've got two ifs. And what we're going to do is the same exact check. We're going to say if add story equals true. Because if it still equals true, that means it never got set to false, so no matches were found, all right? which means it's a unique name. And because it's a unique name, all right, we can, in fact, add it to the database. So to do that, we're going to go to lists here. We're going to add an item to our list, all right? and the list is our story list, that same variable that we've been doing. And the item is going to be whatever they typed into the text box. All right. So in the text box, if we get their text, all right, that's our new story name. So that adds it to our variable. And now we have to send that variable to the database. All right. So we're going to store this we're going to say all right text icc story list which is again our table of contents and now let's update it because we just added something to our table of contents so there's our global story list so that's going to update it and update the table of contents and then again there's the table of contents, but there's also the story itself, all right? Just like when we were starting this one down here, um, we're going to need a second store value, all right? This is for the table of contents. This is for the story itself. So again, the story itself, we're just going to put ICC in front of it so that in the database, we can keep it straight from other labs. We're again going to use the text from the text box. And the value that we're going to store with is just our intro that we're using every single time, which is once upon a time. All right, so that's our variable intro there. And then because the add is over, all right, because we're done adding, um, we're then going to set our variable to false again. That way, if they want to add a second story, they can do it. So we're just going to set this back to false so that it's all good to go if they want to add a second story. All right. So 
what that's going to do, again, just to kind of re revisit here, is when they hit add, all right, so when they add a story, the first thing we look, do is look up the table of contents, all right, then we save the table of contents, and we make sure that the story title they just picked doesn't already exist. And then if it doesn't exist, we get to add it to the database and we're good to go there. All right. So we've got all of this, we've got all of this. The only other thing that we're gonna add to this first screen here um, is an after list picking. So if we go to list picker here and we say after picking, and right? so after we pick, this is us actually picking a story. All right, we're just going to open another screen. All right, so we're going to open another screen with start value, the name of the screen. Again, for me, the name of the screen was story screen. And then the start value is going to be whatever story they just picked. So we're going to look for the start value, which is whatever story they picked, which again is in the list picker, is the selection. And then we're also going to have a when other screen closed event. All right, we do that whenever we have multiple screens. So when another screen is closed, all we're going to do is, again, just make sure that we update our story list. So we're just going to say call, whoops, not store value call value, so get, and we're just going to look up the table of contents again so that we get the most up-to-date version of everything. Again, we always want to just make sure we're getting the most up-to-date version, so when the other screen is closed, we're just looking up the table of contents again so we get um, an up-to-date version there. All right, so this is everything for screen one. This sets up kind of our initial table of contents. It sets up um, getting a story in there um, and then adding new stories. So screen two, which thankfully is a lot shorter, all right, um, the story screen is all about just updating the stories themselves. All right, so again on here, we have our text labels, two text labels. We have an empty text box, we have an add to story button, and we have a home button. All right, so we'll start with the home button, which is button two, because that's really easy. Um, all this is gonna be is a closed screen. It just brings us back to the front page. So when they click on button two, you're just gonna close the screen. The next thing that we'll do is we're gonna need a variable. And I'm going to call this add to story and I'm going to set it equal to false. And it's going to be kind of the same as it was on the other page. Right. Now, as usual, all right, when the screen loads, we need to look things up. So we're going to get a when screen initialize event. When the screen initializes, we're going to set label one. All right, so set label one text to the start value, all right, which the start value is the name of the story they picked. So basically that's just going to put the name of the story up at the top of the screen. And then we're going to go into the web database and we're going to look up that story. So to look up the story, again, remember we put ICC in front of all of our story names. So we're going to look up ICC and then the name of the story, which again is in that start value block. All right, so when the screen loads, we're basically just going to look up the story. 
And then when it responds, so when the tiny b responds, when it gets its value back, okay, all we really need to do is set label two not to the tag, because that's just the name of the story, but the value. All right, that's going to give us the actual words that are that are being stored for our story. All right, so that's going to load it up. And then again, because multiple people could be working on the story at once, that's where the clock comes in. All right, so we're going to get this clock event when the clock expires, which again is every three seconds, we're just going to look up the story again. All right. So what that means is every three seconds, we're going to have the story reload itself. That way, if somebody's changed it, we get to see it changing in real time. Um, otherwise, it wouldn't change until we reloaded the page. But by using the clock, we can have it reload every three seconds. All right. So last thing to do here is just set up additions to the story so button one is our add button so when they click on button one which is our add button again the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look up the story all right and the reason we're going to look up the story is we want to make sure that we have the most recent version yes the clock is reading it every three seconds but basically once we hit add we want to make sure we're getting the most recent version. So we're going to look up the same exact thing we've been looking up every single time, ICC with the name of the story. And then we're going to set submission to true. Right, just like we did on the last page. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back here to this got value. Because remember, this one event triggers every time we put a request to the database. And sometimes we put the request just to look up information. And sometimes we put the request in because we want to add information. So we're going to say if add to story equals true. That means somebody's trying to add to the database. All right, so if add to story equals true, then what we can do is we can store a value. All right, so now we're finally updating the story. And we can say store the value. And what we're storing is the same tag that we've been using all along. So ICC joins together with the start value. The start value has the name of the story. And then the value to store is going to be another join. And we need to make the join have three sockets. So the first socket is for the value from the web database. All right, so again, that's the most recent version of the story. The second socket is an empty space. So you have to click in there and actually hit spacebar. All right, and the reason we're putting that is if you don't have that, like it could end up looking like one big long run on word. So we're putting the space in there. And again, make sure you actually type in there and hit the spacebar. And then the last thing that we're going to do is add whatever they typed into the text box. So whatever they typed into the text box is going to get added to the end of the story. Right. So that's going to get submitted. And then we're going to set global submission to false so that people can keep adding, sorry, add the story to false so that people can keep adding to the story if they want. And then the last thing that we'll do is when 
the database responds and it says, hey, your value was successfully stored. Um, all we're going to do at this point is we're just going to clear out the text box so that the user doesn't have to like manually delete it um, each time. So we can say clear out the text box, set text box to, and then just empty quotes. And then we can also hide the keyboard just in case it's still there and kind of in the way or anything like that. All right. So that's it for this page. All right. So the, the big idea here is we look it up, all right? We update our text box. Um, and then if we're making an addition, we look it up again so that we get the most recent version. We add to it. Um, and then we store that to the database. So in theory, this should all work. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna start up the emulator. All right, so here we go. It's obviously gonna take a second. Um, and what I have in this other tab is the database. So this is the web database that exists. Right now, there's nothing in it. But what we should see is that once the emulator loads up, it's going to look for the table of contents. It's not going to find it. So it's going to create the table of contents and add it with the title, My First Story. So fingers crossed that's what actually happens. Otherwise, this is going to be super embarrassing for me. And then we get the the glorious waiting for the emulator because it takes forever to start up. Um, but this is sort of kind of, you know, the next area that we're going to be spending our time with. We're going to be using this web database and seeing how we can have our, our app sort of interact with other people. And the nice thing is, is that if you go through and actually create what I just created, you will be able to access the same stories that I access. You'll be able to contribute to them. Um, and we'll be all sharing the same database. So even though we're all spread out right now and at our different homes or whatever, we'll all be interacting with the same database and kind of have that shared environment um, where we can all sort of interact. All right, so here's, it's almost ready. All right, nine, eight, seven. And then once this loads up, Wait for it. It's going to be so worth it. Wait for it. Don't close it. Wait. You just got to be patient. A lot of times you think your app is crashing or your emulator is not working, and it's just that you're not waiting long enough. <sighs> there it is. Hooray. All right. So. It just loaded up. It looked for the table of contents. It didn't find it. So hopefully when I refresh this, you're going to see that it's now created it inside of the database. There's ICC story list, which is my table of contents. There's the only value in it, my first story. And then there's a separate entry, ICC my first story, that actually has the story intro in it once upon a time. So if I go back over here and I go back to my emulator, I could choose a story. So maybe I want to edit my first story. It's going to bring me over to screen two in a second. Again, always be patient with the emulator. All right, so there's the title, my first story. There's the beginning of it, once upon a time. And I'm gonna say there was this virus. All right, and I'm gonna add that to the story. All right. 
that just added it to what we already had. Once upon a time, there was this virus. If I go back here to the web database, you're going to see that this table of contents is still the same, but now this has this added part to it. All right. And I could keep going. And it made school shut down. And click add this story. And again, it'll update it. Now, if you were had this app running at the same time, you would see these changes happening in real time. And you would also be able to contribute to this same story, right? We're all interacting with the same database. So if you edit this, everyone's going to see your edits because it's all the same shared database. All right. So let's go back to the home page here. So you can just see the other parts to it. Sometimes you're going to get little errors like that with the emulator as you go between screen to screen. And really, it's just because things aren't catching up in time. So like parts of the app load before other parts. So then you get an error. Um, but it's fine. Like it's all there. Um, you're getting this weird my first story repeating multiple times. Um, again, it's just it's little glitches um, that are happening with the emulator there that are causing that to happen. Um, but one way you can sort of fix that is anytime the screen initializes, um, you can set story list to an empty list. Um, and then the same thing with the when other screen closed. And then that should help get rid of that little glitch where it's like things are repeating over and over again. Again, it's a problem with the emulator, so you just kind of have to live with it. Um, but that is one way to sort of um, take care of that. So I could do this, clear out the list, and then when I research it, all right, that'll send it to the database. It'll update it. Um, whoops, still not doing that. Um, so. Um, we'll go from there. All right. Um, so again, I could add a new story so I could be like my second story. Um, add that. And then if we go into the database here, or if we go into the story list, you should see in the story list, there it is down there at the bottom, my second story. Um, if I try to add my second story again, all right, so if I were to hit add again, it should tell me that I get an error because the name is already in use. All right, so again, just a kind of a brief introduction here onto kind of the web database, actually it ended up not being that brief, um, but it gives you an idea of kind of how it can work um, and what's involved with it, um, and some, and just some, some additional sort of perspective on it there. All right. So I hope this was helpful. Um, again, this isn't a lab. This was just kind of to introduce you to the co uh, context. And then I will put a lab up probably Friday of this week where you can actually sort of, um, work through some of this stuff. All right. Good luck. And, um, I will talk to you later. All right. Bye.